Gentlemen, get the thing straight once and for all. The policeman isn't there to create disorder. The policeman is there to preserve disorder. Hi, everybody. Sean here again with the second installment of my London pickups from uh, record stores when uh, Lisa and I visited London back in June 2024. This time it's going to be about 12 inches. So I'll show you the albums. That sounded weird. Albums, no albums that we picked up here. Starting with uh, this one by the Beach Boys. It is a bizarre compilation called Bug In. And I promise you the reason we bought it was because it's called Bug In. Uh, as Beach Boys fans, we had heard of this album for years. And when Lisa spotted this, uh, I think this was at um, Music and Goods Exchange in Greenwich. Lisa said, this is coming home with us. So I, I had no argument. This is on EMI's Budget Starline label. Uh, Capital also had that label here in the United States. But this is a really weird compilation because look at the titles here. Why Do Fools Fall in Love? That was a B-side. The Surfer Moon, that was a deep cut in an album. Same with Cherry Cherry Coop, Girls on the Beach. Be Here in the Morning, <laughs> We Jump. That's a five-year leap or four-year leap between Girls on the Beach and Be Here in the Morning. And it, the whole album ends with their cover of I Was Made to Love Her. Good Lord. From their uh, Wild Honey album. And here's the uh, back cover. And that's something about British album covers, or actually, I think all European album covers, they're just very, very uh, floppy, I guess. Uh, they're more sturdy in America, the cardboard covers are, but yet the little do scoop, so at least there's one hit on it. Good Lord, most of these, as you can see, are um, deep cuts, really. All I Want to Do, that is the uh, 2020 song, All I Want to Do, Beach Boys fans, not the uh, Sunflower song of a similar title. And uh, the playback quality on that's pretty good. So um, nothing there. I think it's all stereo. If, if it's available in stereo, it was in stereo on that record. Otherwise, it's kind of a uh, mix and match of uh, mono versus fake stereo. Now, something that I found at the um, vintage, what do they call it? Vin the vintage market on uh, Brick Lane from the vintage vinyl dealer. This record here, the early years, the Beatles featuring Tony Sheridan. Now, for uh, probably the few of you who don't know the story about Tony Sheridan working with the Beatles, Tony Sheridan was a Hamburg, Germany based singer. He was born in England, he was British, and uh, he had kind of a following in. Uh, Germany and a little bit so in England, I believe, as well. And um, his bag was he would go into the studio, record some rock and roll songs, and whatever studio musicians he had at the time, whatever was whoever was backing him up, he would call the Beat Brothers. So a Tony Sheridan record would be called Tony Sheridan and the Beat Brothers. Didn't matter who the backing band was. A fun fact one time, at least one song. The Beat Brothers were actually Joey D and the Starlighters of uh, Peppermint Twist fame. But in 1961, over in Hamburg, he had his friends, the Beatles, back him up for a few songs. And when the Beatles hit it really, really big in 1964, record labels who released various recordings by Tony Sheridan and the Beat Brothers learned that in some of these recordings, it was the Beatles. So they marketed those, comp they put those uh, Beatles songs with Tony Sheridan on compilations such as this and marketed the crap out of them. Notice that it doesn't say that Tony Sheridan, the beat brothers says the Beatles featuring Tony Sheridan. Now, if you're a Beatles fan and you're not following Andrew from uh, Parlogram records on YouTube, you are doing yourself a disfavor. Is that a word disfavor? You're doing yourself a disservice. I should say, uh, I found out about this record from Andrew on Parlogram, and he said that this version of the Tony Sheridan recordings, the early years of the Beatles featuring Tony Sheridan with this cover and with this label, that the sound quality is really, really good. He said it's probably the best you're going to find of the Tony Sheridan recordings, and he's not kidding. These do sound really good. Now, the problem is Tony Sheridan and the Beatles only recorded 
seven songs, or at least the, there are only seven songs featured. Ain't She Sweet is just the Beatles. Cry for a Shadow is just the Beatles. Uh, my Bonnie, Take Out sh- Some Insurance on Me, Baby. Uh, for diehard fans, they were there were different versions released because uh, Tony drops a GD in there, so some versions are edited. This is the uncensored version on this recording. Uh, Sweet Georgia Brown, this... Uh, they recorded that in 1962, I believe. And then when the Beatles hit it big, Tony Sheridan went back and redubbed the vocal that mentions the Beatles. Uh, this is that newer 1964 version. Uh, the Saints, that's when the Saints go marching in. Uh, Why Can't You Love Me Again, uh, co-written by Tony Sheridan. That's a Beatles song and Nobody's Child. Uh, that's the Beatles backing him up there. Since they only have seven of those songs that have the Beatles, they have to fill out these compilations with uh, other Tony Sheridan recordings. And I got to say, I really do like the uh, non-Beatles recordings, too. That's a good version of Let's, da- Let's Dance, the uh, Chris Montez song. Uh, that's a pretty respectable version of What Did I Say? It's not as good as Ray Charles's version, of course, but still pretty good. Uh, Ruby Baby is pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Not the greatest thing. Uh, that's actually a... Uh, live performance with an audience and everything. I don't remember if this is the uh, longer one that has a reprise at the end. Um, but I do have to say Andrew from Parlogram was absolutely right. The sound quality on this is phenomenal. The only problem I have with uh, this particular album, the early years is that it plays back a little bit too fast. If your turntable has a uh, speed adjust, such as mine, you can, of course, uh, adjust it, slow it down a little skosh, and it should play back just fine. Uh, what else did I find? At uh, Casbah Records, which I believe has several locations in London, this is from their Greenwich location, just a few doors down from Music and Goods Exchange. But uh, I found this. Uh, not really a huge deal. It's the Beatles' British version of Help. The reason that I bought this was that it occurred to me that I did not have a copy of the British version of help. I only had the American version, so I needed a British copy. Yeah. I could just go to my local store and get the current release. Problem is it's from a digital source. I'd rather it be analog. Uh, used to be that I was all about getting it, the original pressings as much as possible, but nowadays not so much. I just care that it sounds good. Uh, the, there was a price tag on here that said, this is a seventies reissue. This is actually from the eighties, but that's okay. Uh, I know it's from the eighties because I think the giveaway was that there are two EMI boxes in this particular design. Oh, actually, no, that wasn't it. Um, it's the text on the rim, uh, all rights to the, all rights of the products and the owner of the record or the record, the recorded work reserved unauthorized public performance, blah, 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 blah. 80s reissues had that verbiage around it. Uh, I was fine with this being an 80s reissue, just as long as it was mastered by Harry Moss, who is the trusted engineer who did really good job mastering Beatles records. And uh, how do I know this is a Harry Moss recording or a mastering? Uh, let's see. There is a giveaway here. Let me see. Oh, yeah, here it is right here. I don't know if you can see it, but right here, I'll bring it to the light. HTM, that's Harry Moss's initials right there. So you know that Harry mastered this. So the mastering was in good hands. And um, it really does sound good. I, I always clean my records before I give them a first play. So as soon as I got home from London, I ran this through my spin clean cleaner and uh, made it nice and clean ran a uh, de-static thingy over it too, just to clear it up. Uh, this sounds really good, except for both sides at the, the very first couple of tracks have a lot of pops and, uh, and things. And also side one, it degrades in sound as it goes toward the end of the record, which is unfortunate because Ticket to Ride could have sounded much better. Uh, that's normal for a record to do that. That's the nature of records. The closer you get to the middle, the worse they often sound for two reasons. Number one, the groove gets a little bit tighter. And also, as you get closer, that part of the record is really moving a little bit slower. So the slower the speed, the lesser the sound quality. Uh, if it's mastered really well, that doesn't really, it's not really much of a problem. Side two sounds great as it gets to the end. You can't really tell the, deg- the degradation. Now, one more... S- 
one is and i'm not even going to edit this thing but anyway um this is my last pickup this is from music and goods exchange smash hit 71 from music for pleasure that is a budget label uh based out of england um I got this for a few reasons. Well, for one thing, I thought this might be a good candidate for the podcast, and I think it is. I think it is, actually. And also, the cover of this thing is just really bizarre. Now, one of the reasons I was particularly interested when I saw this was Smash Hit 71. There are no artists credited here, and I noticed a couple of them. We have My Sweet Lord, the George Harrison song. Uh, Knock Three Times, which of course is by Dawn, uh, later known as Tony Orlando and Dawn. I thought that maybe what this was, was one of those cheapo records of knockoff versions of hits. And also I knew that Elton John got his start by recording music like that. Like I think he did Cotton Fields as done by the Beach Boys. Basically, they throw in a bunch of studio musicians, have them record clone versions of hits and Elton was part of it. Uh, he's not on this album. Uh, he's not. I, I found a, uh, or at least actually a friend gave me a link to a website that lists everything that Elton was on or was at least believed to have been on both confirmed and unconfirmed. And this was not one of them. I think there was something else in this label before, but it turns out I learned through using um, not Soundhound, but the other, what's the other app that does that? Uh, Shazam that most, if not all of these songs are actually performed by a South African band called Springbok, Spring It Be Okay, which is a type of a Southern and Western African antelope. And um, see, here's the, the label here, Music for Pleasure. I actually have an album that they did that was a reissue of the Beach Boys Today. Uh, they also did like budget reissues of real performers, uh, but this is a typical label here. And here's the back cover. These were big hits in 1971 in England. And um, from what I understand, this is actually a compilation of previous 1971 hits albums that Music for Pleasure released. They put one out for every month. This was basically the end of year for 1971. And I'm not familiar with most of these songs. Never Ending Song of Love. I I don't know who that is. Uh, uh oh that's delaney and bonnie who i don't think really took off in the united states but they were big in england knocked three times of course by dawn um i think Bannerman. i think that one of these songs on here is a t-rex song and of course an american such as myself we don't know t-rex aside from bang a gong get it on um chirpy chirpy cheap cheap i have never heard of this song before this record and this is the dippiest song ever and the crazy thing is multiple artists had it. Multiple multiple artists recorded it. But there was a one-hit wonder band who did it in 1971. Um, I, I think they're called uh, Middle of the Road. But having said all that, um, the sound quality on this cheapo record that I think I paid four pounds for is phenomenal. Seriously, it plays back perfectly. It's nice and bright. The EQ sounds great. There's no um, close to the label degradation. And uh, this is a it's surprisingly well, well recorded for a cheapy label. But yeah, but I will definitely schedule this for a future episode of uh, my weird record collection. But there we go. Um, that is uh, the rest of my pickups from London, England. Thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with, uh, let's see, July 15th. No, August 15th with uh, episode eight, I believe. Bye-bye.